This is MikeBot. Welcome to part two of AnchorMake M5 versus P1P by Bamboo Labs. I'm gonna start off this video with an audio test. So I'm gonna do a startup uh, sound test on the P1P and a startup sound test on the AnchorMake and see which one is louder when they start up. Everything will be insulated. I'm gonna be using a sound meter and I'm gonna put my microphone down. If you hear any external noise at the moment, you will not be hearing that during the actual power up portion of the video uh, because I will be uh, isolating both printers away from any external noise to make it as fair as possible. So I have my sound meter app open here. I'm gonna set it down on my printer and I'm gonna reset the sound. Now I mentioned I was gonna pause my X1C because it's freaking noisy doing the color changes right now. So I'm gonna pause that. Oh great. This is very, very helpful. So I'm gonna put the sound meter down and then I'm gonna reset it and put my mic down and start with the P1P. So I've paused my X1C and I've placed my phone down. Uh, it hears my booming voice right now. So I'm gonna shut my mouth in a second, hit reset, and then we'll see what it looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and place the microphone down now. So that's pretty much it. That was all the noise that came from the printer from powering it on. Now I'm gonna do the exact same thing for the anchor make. All right, here is the anchor make. As you can see, it's powered off completely right now. So I'm gonna grab my sound meter up. I'm gonna put it down, put the phone towards it so we can see. Drop my microphone. And this one's gonna be a little harder to power on because it's buried. I usually use my smart speakers to power on my printers. Believe me, you will know when I turn the printer on. Uh, for the record, Anchor has told me what you're about to hear is normal. This is my second Anchor make. They replaced it and they said this is normal at this point. So this is completely fair. So while here, I'm going to do, uh, might as well do the sound idling test. So right now, I'm gonna shut my mouth and we're just gonna listen to the sound of the printer while it's idling. So it's idling around 66, 67 decibels. Now we'll repeat the same test on the bamboo to see what the idling sound is like. So it's idling around 44. As a matter of fact, I think it's less than that because there is no sound at all. It's probably just picking up the sounds from the anchor make. I'm gonna close my external enclosure off completely and see if that um, makes it a little more accurate. So 
So anyway, I don't really need to go on any further. I guarantee you the sound it's picking up is from the anchor make, but it's whisper quiet. There is no sound coming from it because there's no fan spinning 24-7. So that's it for the first part of the sound test. Uh, the next part of the sound test I'm going to do is while the printers are running. And was there another sound test? So we did the startup sounds, we did the idle sounds, yeah. So the last one is just sounds of the printers while they are running. Um, I forgot to measure the electricity output when they powered on, but that's because I needed my phone to do that. So I'll have to do that another day. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and start uh, the first of the test prints. Uh, make sure the time lapse is enabled. And then uh, I'll run the audio test while uh, they're printing as well. So the first test I'm going to do is the quality test. So I'm going to have both of these printers start printing that sanding block I sliced in part one. And uh, we'll see how they both come out afterwards. So um, I'm going to also put this right here. I'll just hold it, I guess. I'm going to try to put this somewhere so we can kind of just see what the noise level is while it's starting. Now this test is going to be somewhat inaccurate. Mainly because there is a bit of external noise everywhere. So, But this is a well-insulated outer enclosure. So it does dampen the sound to some degree from the external sources. Okay, so sanding blocks starting now and go. So for those of you wondering, I'm using the Eligu uh, filament or Eligo, whatever you want to call it, Eligu goo. Um, the anyway so i'm using that filament brand this one's gray the other one's red i don't have the exact same colors unfortunately uh, but it is the same brand of filament in case someone is wondering so as you can see the printer is still whisper quiet it's picking up my voice the uh, sound meter if anything That's basically the extent of the noise. There's not really much more to show here. So that takes care of that one. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing on the anchor. And there is a reason I'm doing this and it's kind of just to prove a point to anchor that their printer is defective and this is not normal. So sanding block, I'm just gonna put this here. I'm gonna hit start. This is normal according to Anchor. Two printers. So uh, quite a bit noisier than the P1P once it starts up. So I'm gonna let these run now. I'm gonna make sure time lapse is enabled. It's gonna take about f almost five hours on the Anchor make and three and a half hours on the P1P. Sliced the exact same way. Both are print printing sanding blocks. One is gonna be in red, the other is gray and it's using the LE Goo or LE Go filament so stay tuned for the final result i'm going to be doing some really highly zoomed in highly detailed overview of these prints so the bamboo p1p finished the sanding blocks about 20 minutes ago so i'm gonna do some close-up shots on these prints and then uh, once the anchor make ones are done, I'll do close up shot on those and then compare the two. So again, for comparison purposes, this is gray, anchor make is red and the anchor make is still going. 
Where's the anchor make? It still has about an hour and a half to go. So while the anchor make finishes the sanding blocks, I'm gonna go ahead and start the next test on this. So the next test I'm gonna do uh, is another file that I sliced in part one, and that was the uh, bed leveling test. So now I will start the bed leveling test on this and then eventually I will do it on the anchor. And then after the bed leveling test is done here, I'll do the uh, 3D print test and then the benchy test. So I'll start with the bed cleaning pad, then I'll do the 3D print test and the benchy. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the anchor. So I'm gonna go ahead and start that here uh, and stay tuned. So the bed leveling test is officially done on the bamboo P1P. So as you can see, basically perfect. So this thing uh, that I actually created is really good for cleaning your bed as well. When you peel it, it takes off all the residue from your printer. So uh, yeah, the bed is perfect. So now I'm gonna do that exact same test on the anchor. All right, so the sanding blocks on the anchor make are officially done. Let me just get this off of here. There they are. So next I'm gonna do the bed leveling test on here. So we'll start the bed leveling test. So we'll go to the USB key. Bed level, this one's gonna take an hour. It only took it only took 20 minutes on the P1P. Alright. So we'll let that do its thing and then we'll proceed with the uh, benchy tests. Starting with the P1P, this is the sanding block test. I chose this because it's pretty basic, simple print, and it's going to be basically a good quality comparison between the M5 and the P1P. I printed the exact same file on both printers, used the exact same settings as you probably saw in part one. Uh, both of them were with the Ilegu, Ilegu um, filament. Uh, I use gray on the P1P and red on the anchor make. As you can see, the prints came out pretty nice on the P1P with the exception of some overhang issues. So you can clearly see there are some overhanging issues that could do to not using the auxiliary fan because I wanted to make this as fair as possible. And I also purposely didn't use any supports. For the most part, the prints are probably a solid seven or eight out of 10. Uh, the issues are very, very minimal. Simple little overhangs, as you're gonna see here. I used my cell phone to record this portion because it gets a lot higher quality. You can see the bottom is pretty clean thanks to the PEI Texture Cheat. It does have the pattern of a Texture Cheat, but for the most part, it's pretty good. Layer lines are almost invisible except on the top, which is expected with 99.9% .9 of 3D prints. So overall, I'm very, very satisfied with the P1P results. So I'm just gonna go ahead and speed up the rest of this video, and then uh, I'll do some close-up pictures and we I can go through them slowly one by one. I used a really high quality camera to take these pictures, so you're gonna be able to really get a good look at it. So depending on the way the light hits the images, you can see the lines are invisible or very minimal. The bamboo seems to do this really, really well. The bottom is Pretty good, you can see the layer lines are perfect. The PI texture cheap uh, kind of goes on there. The layer lines on top are clean, they're like perfection. The overall smoothness, the quality, everything is pretty good uh, considering. And again, I used the most basic slicer settings you can for the bamboo. And I didn't have the auxiliary fan on and it printed at I think 350 MMS. So when you really think about it, 350 MMS, this is really, really good minus the overhang issues, which could have been fixed by adding supports or turning the auxiliary fan on. Once again, very, very, very satisfied with this. So I'm just gonna do a little quick uh, 360 turntable right here, and you can get kind of a little glimpse. Feel free to pause the video, zoom in if you like. But as you can see, they're all pretty clean, minus the overhangs. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I'll get back to you right away. So now we're ready to move on to the anchor make results. This was printed at 250 MMS with no supports and just the basic settings once again. 
So again, it's a PEI spring uh, textured sheet that Anchor uses. The sheet on the Anchor Make is pretty nice, actually. Everything sticks to it. It's smooth. It's nice. It's clean. Uh, the the uh, texture is a little less defined, which is better versus the P1P, which has more of a texture. So as you can see with the blocks here, there's a lot of issues. They're stringing. The overhangs are much worse. The layer lines are very nice and clean as well. They're a little bit more visible, but I'm very satisfied with them. Just the overhangs, the stringing is not the cleanest. And there's no way you can fix this with the anchor make. Like I can't turn on an auxiliary fan. So the only option is turn on supports, which uses more material. Not a big deal though. But the overall quality of them, I wanna say is definitely again, a seven, maybe eight out of 10. Uh, if I used supports, probably would have been 9 out of 10. And I say that because I've seen the way Anchor Make prints come out even with supports. They're hit or miss. Um, for the record, I think the P1P wins this. If you think otherwise, leave a comment below and let me know why you think the Anchor Make prints look better than the P1P prints. So here's some really zoomed in, uh, nice pictures of everything one by one. And that's when you can really start to see what's good and what's not good. The bottom is cleaner, I think cleaner than P1P. The overhangs are worse. The layer lines are, are a little bad. There's a bit of bulging, a bit of stringing, uh, but very smooth prints and I'm still satisfied overall. Now, as far as the actual uh, quality of the prints, both of them are very strong, but I found the bamboo ones to be a little bit stronger. And once again, I can change the settings, add more walls, more infill, but then that's unfair to the bamboo. I sliced everything identical to make this as fair as possible. And I want you, the viewer, to kind of judge for yourself. I made these videos for you to compare which one is better. I did this as fair as possible. No printer has an advantage over the other printer at all. So as you saw in the videos and pictures, they both have defects. Anchor Make seems to have a little bit more defects. Um, you got some issues here. You got a bit of stringing. You got a bit of warping. Uh, the bamboo one, mostly just a bit of defects here. The Anchor Make though is significantly worse than this. And that's the first quality test I'm doing. Uh, so I kind of thought about this afterwards and I think I'm gonna print uh, another item as well, but I'm going to do supports for both of them this time and see what the difference will be like and see how much more difficult it is to remove the uh, supports on the anchor make versus the P1P. But yeah, just based off of this right off the bat, bamboo comes out on top. If I was to grade these, uh, I'd give the bamboo maybe a 7 out of 10. The lines are very, very clean. There's a tiny bit of bulging here. Uh, you know, you can't see, but there's a tiny bit of bulging here. The lines are not very clean here because of the overhangs. Uh, the ones that are clean are pretty much perfect, as you can see in the pictures. Um, with the Anchor Make, there's a bit of warping, a bit of bulging, lots of stringing, lots of overhang issues. Um, as far as quality goes, they're both pretty strong. Actually, this is made with PLA plus. Yeah, the, the bamboo one actually feels a lot stronger. So I don't know what the difference is in the magic sauce, but the P1P is better. I have no other way to put it. So definitely a seven out of 10 for this, and I'd give these maybe a five out of 10. Um, so next I'm gonna show you guys the bed leveling uh, in detail, and then the uh, full 3D printing test in detail the Benchy test, and then I'm gonna print something else with supports, and we'll do an overview on that, and then uh, we'll take it from there. So the bed leveling test is officially done on the Bamboo P1P. So as you can see, basically perfect. So this thing uh, that I actually created 
is really good for cleaning your bed as well. When you peel it, it takes off all the residue from your printer. So uh, yeah, the bed is perfect. So now I'm gonna do that exact same test on the anchor. Well, the anchor make uh, bed level test is done. And as you can see, the results are terrible. So clearly, even like, look at that in the back. So clearly um, the bed leveling isn't that great with the anchor make. So yeah, the bed leveling test with the anchor make is clearly subpar. Here is the bamboo one in comparison. And for those wondering about the size, they are basically the same size. The bamboo is slightly longer, the anchor is slightly wider, but for the most part, pretty much the same and the results speak wonders. So clearly the anchor make bed leveling is lacking significantly. This is terrible, terrible, terrible result. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and run the uh, 500 MMS Benchy on the anchor make. I have to run that from my phone because it's not built into the uh, printer. And then I'll run the built-in Benchy test using ludicrous mode on the P1P. And uh, we'll proceed from there, compare results. Then there's just one more print test to do. And I'll wrap up the videos for part two. Starting a 3D Benchy, once it eats up here, I'm going to put it on ludicrous mode. And then that'll be the comparison to the Benchy from the anchor make. So it's just heating up here. Once it's ready, we'll enable ludicrous. So with the anchor make, you can't actually uh, set ludicrous mode or 500 NMS mode off the printer. You gotta do it in the slicer app while the Benchy, uh, sorry, while the Bamboo p one is the complete opposite. You just set everything standard on the slicer and then if you want to go faster, you can set it on the fly on the printers themselves, which is really neat. All right, here it goes. So now I'll just go down here. Let's set the standard. I have sports mode and ludicrous. We're doing this in ludicrous mode, 500 MMS. And I've never seen this printer. I've seen the X1C ludicrous, never seen the P1P in ludicrous mode. So this will be a first for me. There, it's now switched over to ludicrous mode. I'm just gonna zoom in there. Just to show everyone that it's in ludicrous mode. There it goes. It's only gonna take. It's only going to take ten minutes for this Benchy. It's like a new record. I just wanted to film the anchor going at 500 MMS. All right, the anchor make 500 MMS Benchy is done. initial feedback it doesn't look great I'm gonna go take some photos and I'll point out in the photos where all the issues are so now I just gotta do the same thing on a p1p using ludicrous mode and we'll take it from there so 
So here are the results for the Benchy. So this is the Anchor Make one. As you can see right off the bat, they're stringing. Um, there's a few little issues here and there. I will be able to kind of go more into detail about it uh, in the photos. But here's just a little 360 uh, on the uh, plate here spinning around and just take a good look at this. And just by looking at it there, you can kind of see issues already. So as you can see, there's a, a bit of over or, uh bulging. Uh, it's over extruding tremendously. Uh, there's zits, there's bubbles, it's not smooth, it's uh, even looks like it's shifted. So clearly this anchor make is not meant to do 500 MMS. So I don't know why they enabled an experimental setting when clearly it can't even do the built-in Benji test properly without the print looking like complete crap, basically. Like, this is unacceptable print results. Don't advertise 500 MMS because Bamboo and all these other companies are doing them. They can actually back up their claims. Anchor Make cannot. So I'm very, very disappointed in this Benchy, to be honest. Uh, don't print at 500 MMS unless you can finely tune the print settings and own them in really, really well. Don't even bother wasting filament and time trying to do 500 MMS with the Anchor Make. Now, again, if you're trying to make parts that are basically for, uh, I don't know, like prototyping maybe but it's not that great so now moving forward to the p1p here is the benchy result at 500 mms the print is a lot cleaner there's no stringing there's no bulging there's no shifting uh now it's not perfect it's far from perfect but compared to the anchor make 500 mms benchy this thing is 2000 out of 10 versus the anchor make version so it's quite impressive and it looks great uh, will I continuously print at 500 MMS? Definitely not. But I know that if I want to print at high speed for a quick prototype or something, I know the P1P can do it and the X1Z can do it, no questions asked. Now here's another side-by-side -side comparison of the two Benchies. And you'll kind of be able to kind of see in greater detail here the differences and how the P1P basically destroys the Anchor Make in this field. The Anchor Make is... a lot more expensive than the p1p and i don't know why anchor make if you're seeing this price your printer at five to six hundred bucks that's all the printer is worth until you can get it working properly and put quality parts in there you are ripping everyone off tremendously and i highly recommend everyone looks into the p1p really really heavily before they commit to an anchor make because the price difference why would you want an anchor make you're getting a cheaper priced printer for a lot better with the p1p as i mentioned previously i'm going to now uh, do a support test so i'm going to load my file here and i'm going to run the support test between the p1p and the anchor make and see how the results come out I grabbed these files off of Thingiverse. The link will be in the description below. So I'm going to load both files in to the slicer and I'm going to slice them with default settings, but this time I'm going to enable the support. So I'm going to orient them accordingly, make sure they are flat on the bed. Quality is going to be the same, walls default. Uh, I go with 1.2 for walls, 1.2 for bottoms. I'm going to do the same for the P1P, make sure I enable the supports here. And I'm going to go with the normal support structure, not a tree structure. I'm going to slice the file and get the, re uh, get the print ready for export. So now on the P1P slicer, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to basically import both support files. Again, links in Thingiverse. And from there, I'm going to slice it with identical settings as I did with the Anchor Make slicer. This way, it's a fair test. I'm also enabling supports here and I'm going to be doing the normal supports, not tree once again. And then we're going to see which support is easier to remove. Now I've had various results with the support removal. Uh, for the most part, P1P has been very, very, very easy. When I'm doing uh, screw holes, the anchor make has been easier with support removal. So I've sliced both files. Both are about 30 minutes, seven grams in total. I made them as identical as possible. I'm going to send them to the printer with the anchor make. I'm going to put it on a USB key. 
with the uh, Bamboo P1P. I'm just gonna send it directly over Wi-Fi to my SD card. So as you can see, seven grams, 30 minutes roughly for each file. So super fair. The print on the Anchor Make is done here. So as you can see, the support file is printed. There's supports on the uh, models. And I'm just gonna do a full little 360 here on my turntable, just to give everyone kind of a look at what the uh, supports look like. They look pretty solid, they look pretty good. They held up the top. There shouldn't be any sagging. There shouldn't be any layer line issues. And now I'm gonna remove the support slowly. So with this one, uh, with most supports, I do have to use pliers. With the P1P, I've been able to do it with my hand 99% of the time. Uh, but it varies really. So I just use a pair of pliers. I use some scribers. I do have a video on my channel for uh, the different types of tools I use for 3D printing. I never created a part two for that video because I didn't really get a lot of interest in part one. But check it out if you like the video. Uh, I will create a part two. So I'm just going to fast forward the rest of this portion of the video. I'm just basically removing the supports with the pliers. So taking a closer look at the support prints right now, uh, as you can see on the anchor make, very clean, uh, no issues, a bit of uh, stringing at the bottom there that's expected sometimes. But for the most part, the supports did their job. The file came out really nice, really clean. The removal wasn't too bad. So that's it for the anchor make portion. Now for the P1P. Very, very solid. You, they do their supports a little bit differently. They kind of make them uh, like waves, I guess you can say, but very solid. They did their job again. So these ones are on there pretty good. So I had to use pliers. So I'm just going to fast forward this part again, and then we'll take a closer look at the uh, P1P results and we'll compare it to the anchor make. Here's a quick little 360 I did of the support tests. So I have both the Anchor Make version and the P1P version side by side, and I'm just gonna put them on my uh, turntable here, spin them around, take a look at them. Uh, feel free to pause the video and take a look, but I will add more comments on the photos coming up right now. Starting with the P1P, you can see it's a clean file. Uh, I could do a better job cleaning the supports, obviously, but for the most part, where the supports were holding, uh, it's very clean, solid, no uh, strings, no overhangs, no major issues to really speak of, per se. So, did a fairly good job. The support was a little bit of a pain to remove off of a file this small, but otherwise pretty good. So, Anchor Make. Uh, again, very clean, very nice. It's not the best once you remove the support. I've been having this issue since day one with Anchor Make supports. The file is just not clean underneath, and I think it's just the way the slicing works, and I need to fine-tune it. If you have another way of slicing it, leave your comment below, but there's the comparison between the two. The final test here is the ultimate test. This is the 3D print test. Find the link below for the files off of Thingiverse. Uh, right now I'm showcasing the P1P version and I'm gonna showcase the Anchor Make version in just a second here. So here's the Anchor Make version. So off just initial uh, inspection, they kind of both look great. You can see a bit of stringing with the Anchor Make version. But here is where everything will truly shine once I really get down into the nitty gritty and point out everything. So the 3D printer test is complete. You have the Anchor Make in red here and the P1P in gray. So I'll start out by doing the uh, Bamboo P1P because that one's a little bit easier to do. So as you can see, we got 15, 30, 45, 60, 75, and then from 10 to 80 degree overhang. So no supports were used for this test. So we'll start with the overhangs. So as you can see, I don't know if it's bright enough. Let me grab another light. I am gonna film this with my phone because I'll be able to get really good detail. And I'll film with the camcorder. So as you can see with the overhangs right here, we start to see some issues right around 
to the 60, 75 degree mark. And then over here, you can start to see some issues develop at around 60 degrees. And then it progressively gets worse up to 80. Now, as for the rest of the tests, we have the hot end test here. So we got four. Let me just see what that is there. So we have, for the hot test, we have four, six, and eight mil. And then again, four, three, two. And they look pretty good. Um, obviously, once we get down to the uh, 2 mil, we're using a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. It's not as nice. And then we have over here. Another part of the test. These ones all pretty much look perfect. The bridging looks incredible. No issues with the bridging whatsoever. That all looks great. No stringing, no issues. Zero stringing here, all looks perfect. So for the most part, I'd give this test a nine out of 10 on the P1P. Now we get to the anchor make. So once again, we'll start with the overhang test. So looking at the overhang test, the issues are significantly worse and significantly noticeable. Starting at around 60 here and starting at around 60 here as well. I'll just zoom in there again. So it looks like the anchor make did a slightly better job with this one, but as usual, 75 degree isn't great. With this one, it starts to get worse at around 50. So 50, 60, 50, 60, 70, 80, they're pretty bad. Now for the hot test, or sorry, for the whole test, we have I believe that's two, four, six. It's really hard to tell. Uh, similar to the P1P, it's good, not perfect. And then over here, we have the, I don't even know what test that is, but if we compare it to the P1P, uh, the anchor make did a slightly better job since you can actually read the words on the anchor make. Like both aren't perfect, but not bad for no supports and no extra cooling uh, turned on. Uh, this test here is a little bit better on the P1P. Uh, now for the bridging. Okay, before we get to the bridging, I'm just gonna take care of the elephant in the room. The stringing is complete garbage. The anchor make did a terrible, terrible job with that. And here's in comparison to the P1P. I had to get that out of the way because it's going to get noticed. Um, so again, once we look here on the P1P, it didn't get any of the words or writing on these. I don't know why. I don't know what causes that. The anchor got it. It's not perfect, but at least it got it. Uh, as for the bridging test, it's good. But again, we have some stringing right here. The words actually came out on this. So you know what? Looking at these both, I'm gonna take my number back for the P1P. So I'm gonna say the P1P is more like a seven out of 10. The anchor make for some it's a seven, for some it's a six out of 10. So both printers have their flaws. Uh, in my opinion, I like the P1P better. It looks prettier, nicer. Yes, we're missing a lot of the uh, finer details, but anchor make didn't really do a great job with the finer details anyway. So I'm gonna chalk this one up for the P1P as a win. Here's a close up of the photos that I took of the 3D print test. Feel free to pause the video and check it out yourself, zoom in, do what you like. But as you can see, the pictures speak wonders. I 
don't need to say any more. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think of this part of the test. Final thoughts on all the tests that I performed. So we started out with the uh, noise level test. We did a slicer comparison. We did a print quality test, a speed quality test, a bed leveling test, and a support removal test. So what do I think overall? Uh, first of all, leave your comments below. Let me know what you think of everything. Uh, now here's what I think of everything. So as far as the, uh, I'll start with the support removal first. Both have easy support removal. The P1P is slightly easier to remove supports and I'm not basing that off of the one test, but I am basing that off of everything I've done with the P1P so far and the X1C. Support removal is a breeze. I've noticed with smaller files, it is a bit of a pain to remove supports off of the P1P. The anchor make is easier. So to be fair, support removal wise, it's a tie. Uh, quality with supports, the P1P definitely takes that win. As for the noise level test, which was at the very beginning of this video, P1P wins, no questions asked. The anchor make is noisy, it's a jet engine, super loud, super annoying. There's no way to turn off the fans and the fans are extremely cheap and low quality. The P1P just has better fans and it's a lot quieter overall, even when it's printing. So not really much else to say there. Now, as for the bed leveling test, P1P wins. The bed leveling was perfect. It has a better bed leveling sensor. The bed is not warped. The anchor make bed is warped. It's got issues at the top right corner. I've heard people have similar issues. Let me know what you think of the bed leveling. But again, P1P wins that one. As far as the speed test goes, as we saw with the Benchy, uh, the anchor make can do 500 MMS, but that's where it stops. It can do 500 MMS. It does not do it well. The quality is terrible. And there are tons and tons of issues with the print. The P1P does 500 MMS. It's not perfect, but it's much, much, much better than the anchor make. Uh, go back to the video and take a look yourself. But again, the P1P wins this one. Now, as for the quality test, again, both of them are close, but the P1P comes out on top again. The quality is just nicer finish, cleaner lines, no issues at all. The anchor make, it's hit or miss. You either get a ton of issues or you get no issues, but it's not consistent. While the P1P gives you consistent results all the time. Hands down, no questions asked. So once again, the P1P wins this one. Now, overall, uh, both slicers are good. The P1P is much finer tuned and well polished. Anchor is having a bit of a struggle with their slicer. They've integrated Cura and Prusa uh, just because everyone hates their slicer. There's no other way to really put it. Anchor Make has a lot of work to do on their slicer. Hands down, no questions asked. So overall, what do I think? I think the P1P, $900 Canadian versus $1,100 Canadian for the Anchor Make. The P1P is one, a hundred times better printer in every way, shape and form. It can do speed, it can do quality, support removal is easy, the leveling is good, there's noise level is really low. Uh, the Anchor Make, on the other hand, it fails in all the categories. Now, had the Anchor Make been a five, six hundred dollar machine, it'd be a different situation because then the Anchor Make wouldn't be in the same league as the P1P. And I believe that's where the Anchor Make should be priced. It's an overpriced machine that cannot perform yet. There is a ton of work that Anchor Make needs to do to get that Anchor Make up to speed, but they do have a good base. They have a good start. They just need to polish it and clean it up and make the printer work properly and maybe move away from the bed slinger. And that's pretty much sums it up. So what's next from here? I still have one more video to do on this testing and we're calling that video part three. So basically with that video, I'm going to do uh, the AI comparison, hardware replacement comparison, um, power draw comparison uh, and power draw while it's idling and while it's printing, as well as how support works. So when you email customer service, is the support good? Which one is better? And that'll basically sum up this series. So let me know what you thought of everything. Leave your comments below and hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. 
If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel. It's greatly appreciated and it shows me that you enjoyed these videos and you like the work I'm doing and you want to see more. If I get at least 20 likes on this video, I will proceed with part three. But if I don't get any likes or and I get more dislikes, I'm not going to bother making a part three because it took me 10 hours to film this video and another like maybe five or six hours to edit. It is a lot of work to do these. So please hit that subscribe button, like if you enjoyed it, leave comments below if you have anything to say. But that's it for today. Thank you all for watching. My thought out. And for those that are sticking around to the end, enjoy some bonus time-lapse video footage.